Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Mind of on Carl B TV, brought to you by Moby Tech Queensland. My guest today is Lily Possel Waits. Oh man, I almost said it wrong. <laughs> no, that was it. You got it. I got it. I got it. Th- that TH in the in the last name. Yeah, not Very silent. Confusing. So silent. Uh, Lily was pick three in the 2019 AFLW draft. Is on her way to becoming one of the best AFL women's footballers in Australia, and I can say that you might not have to say that. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. (laughs) But I've I've watched, like I've watched you as a fifteen-year-old play against senior women and dominate. I know you're you're bloody talented. Um, What was it like? I guess first getting drafted. Yeah, it was a pretty surreal feeling. Um, I was obviously in talks with the Lions, and then I think they said a couple weeks out that I'll be they'll be taking me down to Melbourne for the draft day, and I was like, oh. This is pretty crazy. Like, I guess it's going to be real. But I don't know. I didn't really feel like real or final until like they called my name out and I was on stage with Craig with my jersey. And um, I gave him like the awkwardest hug. It was so (laughs) awkward. I watch it back and I'm like, no, I can't believe that happened. (laughs) It's pretty embarrassing. But yeah, after that, I was like, all right, like, let's go. Was it just so much relief, like hearing your name get read out? Yeah, I guess we've been like in all the academies and everything, all the pathways for a while. So it was pretty like rewarding and it was a relief, yeah. That's cool. So you're you're in the Brisbane Lions Academy for three years before you got drafted, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was that like a thing much before you joined? Was that still a new thing? Um, I think I was sixteen or fifteen when the like AFLW comp got announced and then I think I made Lions Carrot Academy the year after that and right. then it kind of just all went up from there. Yeah. So yeah, so the the years leading up to being drafted you were all Australian you represented the Queensland side in under 18s for two years yeah that was pretty cool um obviously I think that exposed me to like the better players and all that rather than just the club footy because played against some pretty talented girls that are now like really dominant in the AFLW so to play against them in the 18s and then transform into the AFLW is really cool yeah can you remember like who one of your harder competitors were that you played against in those games um yeah obviously maddie press park is from vic metro she was always so dominant yeah. in all the um championships we played and then see her now still like win carlton bnf's pretty cool yeah definitely you one day yeah <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> so so footy so you like your dad massive afl fan and obviously uh you grew up with him as a father talking about footy all the time who did you idolize growing up in afl <laughs> Well, honestly, I didn't really like AFL growing up. I, whenever he put it on the TV, I was like, no, I'll put the NRL on. Like, <laughs> what is this? Um, so right. then, yeah, I know it was pretty random. No one really knows that. But, yeah, I loved NRL, loved the Roosters, loved Anthony Minicello and <laughs> Roger Tuovasashek. Um, and then I played Tag because I liked NRL and that, I thought that was pretty similar yeah. just with some tags. Um, and then Dad always obviously played – at Morton Bay with the Masters and all that. So I would still always go to training with him, still kick their big size five <laughs> footy around, um, got winded a few times. Yeah, well, just catching the footy. Yeah, yeah. they're all these old 40-year-olds kicking me these <laughs> torpedoes. Um, and then we moved to the Burpengate precinct and there was some girls training on the top field and Dad's like, oh, and you know, go see them, check that out. And then I trained with them that night. I was like, oh, this is actually pretty fun. And then I think I played that weekend – my first game, I kicked like 10 goals or something. And I was like, oh, I think I might play this. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, kicking 10 goals is yeah. a good introduction to sport. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. So how old were you when you played that first game? Um, it was in under 15. So I think I'm probably like 13 or 14 maybe. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's so interesting. Like you mentioned, obviously, um, AFL women's is just in, in its infancy, right, in comparison to the AFL and uh, like you see all of these athletes from other codes coming to play uh, AFLW to at, at the highest level. And then it's like, it's obvious to me when a junior or like someone who's grown up playing footy 
um, place because just their, their ball handling, their skills are just more, I guess, natural. Yeah. So I assumed that you might have been playing against the boys and whatnot growing <laughs> up, but I guess not. No, yeah, I definitely um, wasn't playing against the boys. Like some of the girls have been playing since like they were in Oz kick and yeah. all that. But yeah, I come in a bit later. Yeah, right. But I guess I always had like a some sort of ball in my hands. Yeah. Um, growing up with, yeah. And always kicking the footy, like even before you started playing yeah. uh, for the women's team, you're kicking the footy with dad, kicking the footy with the old boys. Yeah, pretty much. I was always like training with dad just for Oztag or whatever. And obviously you can do some kicking in Oztag, but it's not as much as AFL. But always like played backyard footy with my brother. I knew he, he was, um, I think he's like five years older than me. So right. yeah, he wasn't the nicest big brother. <laughs> he was um, pretty harsh on me, which probably made me tough now. Definitely. Yeah, in hindsight, you appreciate that. Yeah. About the yeah. time I used to come in crying to mum, I was like, oh. I scored a try, but he didn't give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> what are big brothers for? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's cool. So five years older. Yeah. Oh, I think I probably got that wrong. He's born in 96 and I'm 01. So. Now you got you Bang on. Yeah. Look at you. Math guru. AFL Quick superstar. Math. <laughs> <laughs> Quick math. Um, so did he, did he play footy? Um, he played NRL when okay. he was a kid and he played touch, but- right. He went to like nationals for cross country. So that was his thing. Yep. But I didn't get that fitness gene. Nah. I got to work for mine. I hate running. Hey. Yeah. Like I love playing footy, but running sucks. If I'm chasing a football, it's okay. I'm not really thinking about it. But if you send me on a 3K run, <laughs> it's I'm just different struggling. when there's no ball. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it is. Have, what, have you, what's the longest distance you've run in one go? Oh, probably when I had to do cross country at school, like the yeah. 5K. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's just <laughs> sickening, isn't it? Yeah. Do, what do you do long runs for your training? At, um, um, we do like long, we don't really go off kilometers. It's more so like we'll have a program and then whatever um, we need a hit out of that, we got to, but it's not really so much like, oh, you'll go do a 5K run. It's more so like program to like us personally and what we need to get out of the session. Okay. Cool. So do you work with someone at, at an individual level? Like, so I, I, I look at Lily, I'm the professional uh, physiotherapist or sports scientist. I see that these are opportunities. So here's a plan that you need to commit to. Um, yeah, obviously we have um, staff that like individualize us sort of, um, and then they program us depending on what they want to get out of us based on our fitness and all that stuff. Okay. So what does your fitness training look like? Um, well, when we're in off season and we're not at, um, Lions, we obviously have like a number of running sessions we have to do and a number of gym sessions we have to do just in order to, you know, be fit and ready to play that weekend. Yeah. Do they, do they measure like you somehow or or do they leave it up to you? Um, well, yeah, we've got to be compliant with it, but I usually wear a watch, um, that'll measure it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. How many Ks do you get through? Oh, honestly, can't remember. (laughs) (laughs) But um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, haven't been training at full capacity for some time. Yeah. So this year, round four, you, you did your ACL. Yeah, that's yeah. gross. How did it happen? Um. So the ball got kicked in and it was touched, and the my opponent marked it. So I was like, oh, I'll tackle it. Obviously, it's touched. Play on. Um. And then I swung around, and then my leg hit the ground, and it kind of like buckled, and I was like, oh, didn't really think anything of it. Kind of just like hobbled off, and I was like, oh, I might be able to run this one out, and then. Um, got to the sideline, did a few tests and I was like, nah, this doesn't really feel too right. I think, um, I'll just, you know, sit the rest of the game out. And then I got scans, I think, um, the Monday and then got the results back the Monday over. And, um, obviously they confirmed just my ACL and then that was the season for me. Oh, how'd you feel? Yeah. Well, initially when I got the call, cause my, the doctor read it and he was like, Hey Lily, um, I got your results back. Just give us a call. And as soon as he said, give us a call, I was like, oh, I know where this is going. So I was like, it's not going to be good. Yeah. But obviously everything shattered at the start and then kind of got, you know, didn't dwell on it and just got on with it, I guess. Good on you. Yeah, it seems like you have that attitude. It doesn't seem like you get phased by too much. Yeah, well, can't be sad all your life. You just got to move on. <laughs> Amen. That's our quote, eh? That's, that's bloody bang on. I, um, I got a knee playing footy in the quad and I thought I had this big cork. And it got to like Tuesday and we're doing recovery at Red Cliff in the pool under Rob Dick oh, yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm can't even like do the slow running in the water. Like I, this cork <laughs> is, are bad sometimes. is <laughs> shocking, right? And I know they're bad sometimes. So I'm thinking, yeah, it's just a bad cork. It'll come good. I'm getting the trainers to rub it. A couple of weeks go by. It's not getting better. And I'm thinking I'm the biggest sore for this, <laughs> for cork, this cork lasting this long. So I finally go get scanned. I get an ultrasound. 
And um, she's like, oh, you should probably go get an MRI. There's some calcification or something. So I go and get an MRI. And the guy that was doing my MRI just couldn't give a buzz that I'm yeah. there, right? Like he just doesn't care. He loves his life, obviously. He just is a miserable <laughs> bloke. And so I go in for the scan. No small talk with him. We're not vibing at all. I'm no, there's no zigging and zagging. There's no yeah. back and forth. But then I get out of the machine and now suddenly he has all these questions. Um, oh, how did it happen? Or what went like what went wrong? Blah, blah, blah. So that's when I knew that it was Something pretty was bad. Up. Yeah. Yeah, 23 centimeter tear in the end. Oh gee. So quad tear. Yeah, yeah. And we reckon that the obviously the trainer rubbing it out didn't probably, help it post stretch the 20 <laughs> centimeters. <laughs> um, so I'm glad that you don't have that level of uh it, like that, I guess, poor level of attentiveness in there. Yeah, the we? staff were pretty good. Um yeah. they knew so. Obviously, I'd do more damage going back out. So. Yeah. When does the season start? Or like, when does preseason start for next year? Um, considering they brought the season forward this year, so um, I think we start preseason in September, okay. and our first game's in December. I think. Yeah. Awesome. And then how's how's that aligned to your recovery? Like, do you have a time schedule, or is there a plan? Um. Well, if they didn't bring the season forward, I'd kind of like, you know, try and get back mid-season. Um, in the March area, but now because they obviously bring it forward, March is looking like the grand final. So um, it kind of stuffs up my um, like timeline a bit. So um, it's probably looking mostly unlikely that I'll be able to come back. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. It, um, yeah. Is there no like work around? Is there no sort of shortcut? Oh, uh, just considering like my age and all yeah. that. Like I don't want to come back stuff. too early and redo it again. So I'd rather just focus on the rehab rather than, you know, go through that again. Well said. Yeah, it's not bloody not a fun thing to come back from, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. How long were you in like on crutches and in a brace for? Um, I think the first two weeks are like the worst couple. Um, I was lucky, obviously, I lived with mum and dad. So, and dad went in the day before for surgery as well for the same thing. He did it um, tangled up in a cricket bat. <sighs> So, um, mum was literally had these two patients like cooking us dinner, oh, getting everything, you know, because obviously we couldn't walk or anything. We're just both on crutches. Do you think she was obviously complaining a little bit? Oh, Do you yeah. think she secretly loved it? Oh, I don't know. She still, give, <laughs> she still gives it to us to this day. That's so, <laughs> yeah, we got to repay her somehow. How old's your dad? Um, 51, I think. And what was he doing playing cricket? Yeah. That's another question from mum. <laughs> <laughs> She's still up in for that. He hasn't been back since. Yeah. Is, um, that, is he not, is he playing masters at all or no? No, he, he did it playing indoor cricket and then yeah. he was our quaffle development coach at Marichador and then he went to training a week after. He didn't know that he did his knee and then he went up from Mark, come back down and mum was actually at training that day yeah. and someone's like, um, Jodie, Nathan's gone down. She's like, no. Nah, don't want to know. <laughs> and then, yeah, we found out he did Goodness. a bit more damage than just the ACL. Yeah, so no footy over the last two years for him. No. Nah. <laughs> uh, he must be just hating life. Yeah, he's, we actually did rehab together because obviously we were a day apart in the ops and it was pretty funny because obviously he's never gone to gym or anything yeah. and he's doing all these bodyweight circuits and he's – Mum's pushing him and it's pretty funny. <laughs> that would have been good. Like I remember I've, I've had a couple of knee surgeries and like obviously you get given exercises when you're not a professional athlete. No one's there to force you. <laughs> and like you tell your physio, yeah, I'm doing them. Or like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sticking to it. But you, like, I don't know, I, like for whatever reason, I just don't have that uh, that motivation. Drive, yeah. yeah, but at least your dad and you, you had each other to yeah. force each other. Yeah, it was pretty lucky that we had each other because obviously when he was going back to his physio, they're like, wow, you're actually doing like really good. And he's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> they're like not expecting this 50-year-old to have like 90 degree range within two weeks. But yeah, yeah. that's bloody awesome. So did did the AF, like the Brisbane Lions give you that rehab plan? Um, yeah, so I was yeah. working with um, our Lions physios throughout all that time and they were great with all the rehab programs like straight post-op. Yeah. So get me started straight away. That's awesome. That's so cool. So, like, obviously not playing footy for the rest of the year. Your team goes on to beat the Crows in the grand final. Tell us about that day. Yeah, it was pretty surreal. I, I mean, I guess we were just very grateful that the club brung all us non-playing players and all the staff over to still be a part of it. That's awesome. Um, so, all the girls were – all the non-playing girls were all boundary side when, you know, that final siren went. We were all just, like, itching for the siren to go. We had all these Crows fans next to us. We are like, yes, we like, we did it. <laughs> The siren went and obviously I can't run yet. So I'm like, someone carry me. <laughs> so I've got like two girls on either side of me. They're like carrying me over to where everyone was like huddling, like going, yeah, we won. 
Um, but yeah, it was pretty crazy. Just, I think it would have been a lot different if we weren't there to experience that, but we were so lucky the club took us all over. Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty awesome to be there with the girls when Definitely. the final siren went. So good that they did. Like not just all you guys, but the support staff too. Like I, I can't, I couldn't imagine obviously you're missing out because of your injury, not because of your ability at all because you're a gun, <laughs> but then having to stay home or having to watch it on TV. Yeah. You do, I guess um, it would definitely be hard. Like even um, in the few round games where obviously I was post-op so I couldn't like go out to the games or anything. It was definitely hard watching them on TV, but yeah, I couldn't be more prouder of them. How good, how good. So yeah, on the horizon, do you reckon the, the girls will go well next year? Yeah, back to back. <laughs> back to back, lock yeah. it in. Lock it in, nah. Yeah. Um, obviously we're not like done yet. We're not settled on what we did last year. Like we'll put that behind us and just work towards this year. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So like, tell, I'm really keen. I know we already spoke a little bit about this cause I couldn't just bloody wait for the start <laughs> of recording, but um, I'm really keen just to understand like what life is like as a footballer. Like I had a dream of being a footballer. I'm also the laziest person in the world. So that never came to fruition. I'm probably not good enough either, but um, so you, like you play your games you, and then you mentioned that you don't like watching yourself, <laughs> but do you watch the game as a, as a whole unit every week? Um, so the coach will like code it up into a game review and then we'll you know break it down what worked what didn't work um and then we'll go through that as a group and then we'll go in focus on the next week so when you say coded up so you don't watch the whole game back to front you just watch segments um i think some individuals will watch it um like no segments okay. um but as a team yeah we segment segment it yeah no fair enough and then so when you say some individuals do you mean like people like, uh, or Emily Bates, I wanted to make sure I said the name right because she touches it a million times and there's just nothing to cut out or? No, I don't know. <laughs> Some people just like fine. They get more out of watching yeah. it as a whole or whatnot. But yeah, that makes Bates, sense. he gets a few touches. So Yeah, she does. What What is, what is it like with your review? Like obviously you'll have these snippets cut out for you. Is it just, are you in a room with your midfield with Simon Black or are you in a room with Craig or... And then are you just watching your own bits and are they grilling you or like, what is that like? <laughs> um, well, basically it's like all of us are in the same room. So we're not okay. like just in little rooms. <laughs> I was like thinking a meeting office and it's yeah. just like you and the big bosses and you're like, this is how good you are or how bad you are. Um, nah, yeah. So it's like on a massive screen and we'll okay. just go through it together and kind of have group discussions about the plays and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, sorry. I meant the individual. Sections. Oh, the individual. Yeah. Game review. Um, yeah. So we'll do it with our line coach and yeah. then they'll code just like us personally for our game and then we'll go through like each of our plays that we like personally did all our touches and involvements in the game and stuff yeah. and just get feedback and then what worked and what we can work on for the next week yeah no fair enough. is Clark Keating your line coach um Brent Staker in the back line last year was um crackers but because yeah. I played half back this year it was okay. stakes right I, yeah I just assumed you're in the midfield <laughs> Um, no, fair enough. How, what, what's Brent Staker like to work with? Um, yeah, he's really good. He always like he's very like motivating and pushes you to always be better. Yep. So I always do some extras with him. He's um really good and always there for a chat if you need anything. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah. And then like so you work with obviously that superstar and you work with Simon Black. So what's it like having him around the club? Yeah, Black is pretty good. Everyone loves him. Like yeah. he literally just has to walk on the field and we're all like in awe, just <laughs> clapping for him. But yeah, he's honestly got some really good tips that we can all take away from him and put that into our game. So he's yeah. just a great bloke as well. I imagine he just he just hovers. Like he just doesn't need to walk. He's just his transcended walking. Yeah. I just what a bloody superstar, eh? Yeah, he definitely is. Yeah. And then how do you find Craig as a coach? I know, like, we can cut it out if you say bad things, but no, no. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, Craig's awesome. We had him actually, I had him as an under-18 under 18, um, Queensland coach. Oh, right. And that was probably one of the best years, like, I had in footy. And I think we beat um, Vic Metro, which we hadn't done in, like, years. And actually, in that team, there's, like, so many of us that actually got drafted and playing either on the Lions or the Suns list now, which is pretty cool. But... Yeah, had Craig in that year and he's just awesome. We've got a, we've got a good relationship, obviously, because he lives at the sunny coast as well. So we'd carpool on the way to some early morning training sessions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's a really good coach. That's awesome to hear. That's cool that you get to carpool with him and have that sort of personal bond. Yeah, he loves the Foo Fighters. Does he? Yeah, yeah the Pretender. Yeah. Oh, I'm not too sure exactly which one, but uh, okay. loves always put the Foo Fighters on. <laughs> <laughs> How good. And uh, 
So was that the second year of uh, under 18s that he was coach and you were captain or was it the first year? Um, so I think I was in the three years. The first year I broke my ankle, so I didn't get to play that championship. Right. And you then when you were like 15, turned 16, right? Yeah. yeah. And then the year after that, I think he was the coach. And then yeah. the one after that, it was um, James Jelly when I was captain. Right. Okay. How did you find being a captain? Yeah, it was pretty different. I guess I was always captain as at club, but um, it was a bit different being Queensland under 18s with all this um, pretty big competition. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I guess you kind of just focus less on yourself and more on the team and make sure, you know, everyone's up and about. It's not just about you, so... Yeah. yeah, it was good to have that experience, I guess, to take it into a bit of leadership in the AFLW. Do you think that's trans, like those skills, like you mentioned focusing on the team or focusing on other people outside of yourself, do you think that's translated into other aspects of your life? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, not everything's always like about yourself, I guess, so you got to help everyone else out. Yeah. Um, but yeah. No, I, the reason why I ask is because I see kids like yourself, these bloody kids, or they... All they bloody care about is themselves. They think the world's out to get them and they like they just hate life. And I, I just, it, it's cool to hear you talk about like that transition from just being so selfish into actually supporting and caring about other people. I think, I think it's a massive part of growing as a person. Yeah, definitely. And I think if you don't think about yourself and you put the team first, like everyone just plays better together. It's not really about like individual accolades. It's just... You play better as a team, then obviously you get premierships. And you'll play better. Like you'll stop being in your head and so hard on yourself. You'll just yeah. be happy because everyone's like working together or we're, in a, we're winning and yeah, you'll exactly. just start enjoying it and, and behaving in a better way. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so I guess like did you – when you started playing for the Queensland team, you made all Australian a couple of times, like <laughs> no, no big deal. Like did, did was it always I'm going to go play AFLW – is that was that the like the goal? Was it something that you were striving towards, or have you just sort of taken it? As um, a, as a yeah, I think it kind of just come along um, when I started making all these teams, and I was like, oh, like this is obviously maybe going to be something. So I was like, each year kind of just worked hard. Um, like even when we went back to club footy and it wasn't championships, um, just always like work hard as if every game was like trying to get picked or picked yeah. up or whatever. So yeah. Yeah. I think it just come along with each team that I made. I was like, yeah, like I'm ready to do this, work towards it. Yeah. And like, yeah, so just achieve that next thing, achieve that next thing. Yeah. Just don't really focus on like obviously the end goal, just take each game by game. Oh, that's cool. And so the next thing for you now is just getting rehabbed. Yeah, getting pretty much. That's the same thing with rehab. Just take each week by week because if you think ahead, like you won't play for another nine months, um, which is like way too far to th- head to think yeah. about that now. So just think about what you'll achieve in the next week or so. Yeah. I think like uh, a lot – and I'm, I'm just reflecting on my life and some things that I would have liked to try and do when I was younger and things that I'm trying to do now. And like you, you think about the end goal or the big picture and then you think it's too hard and then you just never try. Yeah. And like that that advice just to just to take the – like to, just to keep going, just to go, just to go aim for the next thing. I think it just it will, resonates with me anyway. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can't get too far ahead of yourself. Like like I said, if I think about playing already, like obviously I'm way too far off that. So yeah. just got to think about what I'll achieve next week. So sorry about uh, sorry about saying that you're going to win the BNF next year. Yeah, year I think that's out of the equation. Sorry about the three flags in a row. And sorry about <laughs> it. No, no. <laughs> You'll get there. Like oh, it's it's great watching you play. Like you're, you're a gun. Like do you feel like you're at the level of the people that you play with? Um, I think when we train all together and you train around them all the time, like you only make each, each other better once yeah. you're in that high performance environment. So training next to the likes of like our BNF winner, Ali Anderson, like you put yourself on her so you become better like her. So I think if you train in that environment um, around all those people, you can only get better. Yeah, no, well said. And nothing against the Morton Bay women's, but like do you feel like you play better because the quality around you is better? versus like a, so against women that might not be as high level or as professional or as, yeah. Yeah, well, I think um, when I was playing at Morton Bay, I had the choice whether to play under 17s against like obviously girls my age or play um, in the women's team. And I chose to play in the women's team just so I could get used to the bigger bodies and all that, which I think was probably the best decision for me because then when I went to play Quaffle and all the next step, it wasn't such a big like jump. jump of the body size so I think that's something that I took away 
from Moonton Bay, which was really good. Yeah, I see, yeah, I'm thinking about like just myself playing footy. And I played my first senior games when I was 16, and just yeah, having the uh, like the opportunity to play against men and actually learn what it was like so young definitely yeah. set me up for success. And I see some players uh, that I used to play with that never took that opportunity because they didn't want to, I guess, challenge themselves and and yeah. it definitely like showed in their uh, football ability as they got older. Just more timid, more uh, not, not more hesitant. I think. Yeah, you definitely need to be like aware of the bigger bodies. So that was good getting that experience at fifteen or sixteen, I think it was, or sixteen, seventeen. Who do you think is the most important player at, at your club? It's a great question for all thirty-two of us. <laughs> no. Great answer. <laughs> um, me, I am. <laughs> I think um, Brie Conan goes pretty underrated. Um, yeah. she's. Obviously, in our back line, and she's just a gun. Like, whenever the ball goes near her, you just know she's going to win a one-on-one contest. Yeah. So she's someone I rate pretty highly. Ah, love that, love that. And what about the best player in the comp? That's a great one. I think Erin Phillips, when she won the um, best and fairer, she was, like, definitely a class above the rest then. Um, she's obviously awesome. I was actually lucky enough when I was in the National Academy, she was actually one of our mentors in that. So... She was just awesome. Like you just look at her and her skill set and just her strength is just insane. So she's a great hard worker and even better player. Yeah, yeah. It's just, she's a bloody gun. Uh, did, did she grow up playing footy, do you know? Um, I think her dad played at Adelaide um, or Port Adelaide, one of the two. But, yeah, yeah I'm not too sure in her history. But, yeah. Yeah, because she's she, just another one that looks like they've grown up playing football. Yeah, like, definitely. Like yourself natural. has the natural sort of ability. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you can tell you can tell when like an athlete's playing AFL versus uh, yeah someone cross who's grown up doing something. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I think about Mason Cox and Mark Blitzarbs and yeah. these blokes that are like well, Mark Blitzarbs is gone now, but just the, it takes so long for them to convert. Mm. Cause our sport's so so unique. Yeah, and most people do grow up playing it, and that's like like you said, you can pick them out when they haven't played it from such a young age. Yeah, but. It, do you, do you have it like a genuine love for footy now? Yeah, definitely now. Like I don't think I'd work as hard as I do if I didn't. I think you got to love it to work hard for it. Yeah. What do you th- What do you think makes footy or AFL the best sport in the world? Probably, I would literally say like the people you meet along the way. I think you just have so many friendships and different connections because you see them like every night and everyone's like dying together in the conditioning and you just become so much closer. That, yeah, so like, uh, tell us about some of those times. You have like a preseason camp that you all go on and, and like go through the ringer. Um, we haven't um, lately, obviously because of COVID. I think it's been a bit hard to organise those things. But yeah, our preseasons are pretty hard. Obviously, in the heat and all our running sessions, like it's just pretty hard. But when you do it with people around you, you just push each other to be better. Definitely. What's What's one of the hardest challenges you had to do in those sessions? Yeah, think uh, back. not t- not um, anything that stands out at the moment. Uh, is it just like the quantity of things he had to do? Yeah, so I think like- it's just like everything all together. Like you train so hard for the session and then you got to do running on top of that and like the weather, just everything. I did a, um, a pre-season camp for Sandgate and uh, Dan Dick Foss, Rob's brother, was um, – uh, was t- taking one of the sessions. We went out early morning for a hill run and we just did hill runs just nonstop yeah. over and over again in the heat. It was just bloody, just terrible. Yep. And uh, Dan put himself in hospital, de- <laughs> dehydration. That's hectic. And then came back and ran training in the afternoon. Just maniac. Yeah, we haven't been that bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, oh, yeah, just some some people. Like, do you, is there anyone at the club? That, that just does like that is just so it's just an animal like I, like you just see I, I, an animals probably not the best way to say it but just I definitely don't have that work ethic right like and you mentioned that you're not a runner like you, you yeah. might be naturally lazy as well like is there anyone at the club that is just a, a pure bloody yeah we have some pretty good runners like Sophie Conway she's always a gun at runner like she's always at the end of each test and all that um, Nat Gride is a pretty good runner. Like she'll the most competitive person I probably know. She's always pushing everyone really hard. Um, Kate Lutkin's another one. She's just fierce competitor, always drives to be better. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that, like just their work ethic is their work. You mentioned their runners, but it, like, do you see that work ethic in other aspects of? Yeah, training definitely in like the games and stuff. Like it's one step to make that contest, they'll get there, and you just know you'll get that from them. Yeah, no, that's cool. What do you want to be a midfielder as you progress? Um, yeah, eventually I'll probably work into um being a midfielder, but yeah. at the moment, obviously, we've got some really good midfielders in our team, so. Yeah, just yeah. happy to play my role. Batesy and Anderson are guns. And yeah, so you just mentioned you're on the halfback now. Yeah. Um, how are you finding that? Um, yeah, pretty good. I played um, halfback in the quaffle season prior to this A4W season. So then Craig kind of liked how I played there and then transformed into the A4W season. Yeah. Do, are you accountable? Are you one of those players that likes to run off and, and leave your player on man to get a touch or are you pretty? <laughs> uh, good to a bit of both. A bit of overlap <laughs> run, a bit of, you know, one-on-ones. Yeah. Yeah, I loved um, I loved being a backman and lining up on the worst forward so I could try <laughs> and try and just touch the footy as much as I could. But there's no bad forwards, I guess. No, there isn't. The They're all level. pretty good. You've all got to be conscious of them all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's crazy to think about. It must be pretty cool to be a part of the AFLW while it's in its infancy. Like, um, you're like you're you're a part of something that is just started to come to come to life. It's so cool to see women's sport and women's footy evolve and obviously it's going to go so far um over the next 10 years 20 years 100 years how have you seen it grow over the last few years since you it was launched and then since coming to play yeah i think the talent just becomes better um each year and like you watch it on tv because like obviously when i'm not playing i watch the other games whatever and um just the talent in it and the level of it just evolves each year and I think we're really um, building towards something pretty cool. Yeah, I think so. I think, um, like, if you think about the AFL, we've obviously had 100 years of development, like three generations of people growing up playing the sport and then playing in the AFL or playing in, in uh, lower competitions. Uh, the AFLW is only so new, so we haven't had the opportunity to see women grow up and, and play the sport. It's going to be pretty insane to see some of the women that come out of the – the uh the underworks over the next few years and then into the future yeah definitely for sure and I think um the longer it goes on hopefully it becomes more of like a full-time thing rather than yeah. just a part-time which is also another factor which is a bit hard um time-wise um to put like obviously extra sessions in for skills and stuff why most of the girls work full-time as well so trying to manage that as well as trying to become a better athlete um so hopefully over the next couple of years or even more than that, um, it'll just evolve into full time. Yeah, I think so. And we're obviously on the right track, right? But yeah, that was actually one of mum's questions. I'm going to ask you a few of qu- mum, my mum is a massive fan of Lily's, has watched her play growing up as well, being at the same footy club. But uh, yeah, it was like, how, how have you seen other women juggle the full time work with, with sport? Yeah, some of them are pretty amazing. I don't know how they do it. Obviously, I only work part time, so yeah. can't imagine full time. But yeah. I think once you get to training, like, and you see all the girls, like, I think you kind of just forget that you had work that day. Everyone just makes each other's day um, that bit better. So, yeah, they manage it pretty well for, you know, the time and the strain it has on their body. That's cool. Yeah, like, I, I still play footy myself, and I, I've said a couple of times, I'm not sure if I've said it on the podcast, but, like, footy is one of the only things that I do in my life where I'm just completely present, like, no other – no other problems in my life matter. I'm not thinking about anything else. I can just be there and play footy. And I'm sure that it must be the release for some of the women that you play with is just I get to go and just kick the footy with my friends and, and actually enjoy, not that they might not enjoy the work that they do, but just get out and just do something that they love doing. Yeah, definitely. When you get to training, you kind of just like, I don't know, just like you said, get in a zone and you're like here with all the girls and it's really enjoyable. And yeah, it's just like an out, I guess. But yeah. That's why I think we work really hard um, to become better because, like, everything just makes it better and we love it. So good. Do you guys go on a big footy trip after the grand final? Um, yeah, we went to Magnetic Island because um, yeah. Brie Conan actually grew up there. Really? One of the girls. So, yeah, we stayed at um, her parents' house. So it was pretty nice over there. Oh, unreal. How many of you stayed at her parents' house? Uh, I think there was maybe 20 of us that went over. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. No, no stories that you're able to share. Eh? Nah. People all under wraps. <laughs> cut, cut that. <laughs> nah, of course. But no, that, that sounds so cool. How long were we over there for? Um, I think we were over there for a few days. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, very cool. 
So let me ask a couple of questions from Mumsy because she she was excited that you were coming on and hopefully you can say hi to her after. Shout this. out to Linda. Shout out to Linda. <laughs> what a bloody legend! I shouldn't. I've never said Mumsy in my life, but you say Mumsy, and now that you're in the room, just bloody influence oh, me. Oh <laughs> Christ! Just rubbing off on me. Um, did did you doing your ACL make you ever consider giving up on footy? Um, no. Nah, I think um in the long run, it's like. Not a blessing in disguise, but kind of just makes you take footy for granted in a way. So kind of just gives you that gratitude that, you know, you lost footy and now you got to work hard to get it back. So, yeah, yeah it kind of gives you that drive to get back to where you were and better. Definitely. It's so easy to take the good things in life for granted, eh? Like yeah. what's that saying? Like you, you never knew your... What, what you had until you lost it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, you never knew what you had until you lost it. No, nah, well said. So you're just truly grateful for the opportunity now. Yeah, I obviously um, doing it straight away. I was like, oh, like pretty shattered. Oh, didn't think that straight away. Yeah. Like, oh, don't worry. So I'm grateful though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm like, oh yeah, this is good. <laughs> grateful for this. Nah, but I think, like I said, if you just don't dwell on it and just move forward, like um, you got to appreciate what you had, I guess, and try and get that back. Yeah, no, that's a, a bloody good piece of advice. Thanks, Lily. Um, did. Yeah, how did you have a role to play each week after your ACL? So were you still able to be involved in the club? Did you have a, a, a thing that you could do to help out? Or um, Well, the first few weeks, obviously, I wasn't around, obviously, because after surgery, I couldn't um, really get around that well. Um, but then after that, I think I just ha- was straight into rehab and had all my programs to do. So yep. still around all the girls and in on everything. So, yeah, didn't miss out on too much. That's great. So you never felt like left out? No, nah, definitely not. All the girls are very including and all the staff in that. So great Unreal. club. Um, do you have a favourite player? Uh, do you have an, a, f- a favourite AFL player? In our team or? Well, like I've already asked you who you like. Who, oh, I guess I asked you who you, I thought you thought was the best. But I meant AFL men's. Do you have a favourite AFL player? Um, yeah, I kind of I liked um Jason Johannesson from the Bulldogs. Yeah, he's like great running half back. Yeah. Um, but obviously Lockie Neal from the Lions is pretty good. So yeah, yeah. He, he just can find the footy. Can't he, he can. <laughs> yeah, loves to touch it. Um, and then yeah, is there a different favourite player that you have? Like best mate at the club, maybe. Um, Bell Doors is probably like my best mate at the club. Yeah. Um, we mean her together. Pretty um good times, but <laughs> yeah, because we're both from Richardor, so yeah. we come through all the pathways together. We got drafted together, so come into the club at the same time together. So we're pretty close. That's so cool to have that. I've noticed like in in the AFL p- clubs are doing that now, like they're drafting players that were good friends on the same team. Like Gold Coast took Noah Anderson and Matt Rowell, they picked one or two because they were yeah. best friends. It just it makes sense, gives them a reason to stay rather than just being homesick and then going back. Yeah, definitely. After a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, but me and Belle obviously carpool from the sunny coast of Brizzy like every day and the car trips are a bit funny. So <laughs> kind of miss that when the season's over, but we still catch up all the time. Good to hear. Good to hear. Um do you do you ever play at different clubs or help out local clubs outside of the Brisbane Lions during the season or during the regular season or outside of the AFL women's season? Um, yes, yeah, so we have like little clinics that we'll do or little player appearances. Just um, whatever the media team sends through, I guess they just um, whoever's available will go do that. Okay, cool. And so you like so Oz Kick. Uh, like other you mentioned clinics yeah so like we have a pretty like a line clinic um okay. we had it like the other week at the gabba um so all the little girls come out and they loved it got to train on the gabba had a little sausage sizzle after nice. so yeah it's do you love doing that stuff yeah i love i love all the kids and all that just seeing them like just you know go crazy over us girls is yeah. pretty cool because never thought like i'd be on the side that's you know looking up to like someone like me or something like that but yeah it's pretty cool that is cool do you think about that much yeah, because I used to, obviously, like I said, love NRL. So when I would go to NRL games, I'd be like, oh, I need to get a photo with this player, this player. But now, like, those girls do it to us, so it's, like, pretty wild. Pretty wild. Do you, like, is it – like, do you have to pinch yourself sometimes? Is it is it hard to comprehend that you're in this position? Or is it just, just going with it, just enjoying it? Yeah, sometimes you get, like, the little girl that'll stay with you the whole clinic and you're oh. like, oh, like, a little, you know, little friend here. Yeah. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, awesome. Um, and then, so last question from mum, and then I'll stop <laughs> annoying you. I'll stop forcing you to hang out with some old people. <laughs> I apologise. But um, if you could give some young women a message to 
well, if they want to play at the highest level, like what what would you say to them, or what would you, uh, I guess, use to encourage them? I'd probably just say like, um, once you like want to know where you want to go, I'd just say make sure you still have fun while you do it, because you know once you get there and you're not having fun, you gotta have that drive to keep moving forward and if you're not having fun then I guess you know you kind of lose that love for whatever sport you're in so just make sure you're having fun while you do it bloody enjoy life eh? that's it what's the point of it if you can't enjoy it and have fun good message thanks Lily (laughs) (laughs) I really appreciate your time thank you so much for coming out it was awesome to talk to you and learn a little bit more about everything that's going on at the yeah, Brisbane Lions. I keep going to say the AFLW, like as if it's this whole organisation <laughs> that you're a part of. Um, but no, look, thank you so much for being here. I hope it wasn't too painful. No worries. Thanks for having me. No, yeah. it was pretty good. And I uh, just would like everyone to know, Lily did say this off camera, that she always goes to Moby Tech Queensland for her computer needs. Uh, massive shout out to Wayne and the team. Uh, if you mention Carby TV, you get 10% off all of your computer support. They're absolute legends. And thanks for giving them a shout out, Lily. I appreciate it. No worries. Best in the business. <laughs> Best in the <laughs> business. Yes. Uh, thanks, guys. We'll uh, see you next week. We have some Carby TV tees. We've got a black with the blue logo. We've got a tan with a filtered logo. I'm stoked with how these turned out. Uh, there's super limited numbers if you want to get one. Um, if the appetite's there, we might order some more. But for the time being, uh, jump in quick to get your size. Uh, 40 bucks a piece. If you buy two, you get 10% off. All the details in the description. I'm wearing a medium. If this gives you a sense of what they fit like, they're on the AS color uh, tees, which are an awesome uh, fabric. They're the basics that you find in like Universal Store and in Coach Kings, et cetera. But no, thank you to Hip Land Co. for helping us out. We're partnered with them. Great clothing company. Check them out. They'll be in the description too. And yeah, get your hands on one of these bad boys. Thanks, guys. See you next week.